Amen. All right. Thank you, James, for playing for us tonight or today. I always want to say tonight for some reason when it's morning. So I don't know. I don't know. Maybe I, I'm in China right now. It's 12 hours difference. So all right. Let's go ahead and turn with me in your Bible if you have them close at hand. Philippians chapter number one is where we're at today. Philippians chapter number one. It is a beloved book of the Bible by many. And so we're going through the book of Philippians for the next five weeks. And so we're looking forward to all that the Lord has for us to do uh, through this book. So if, you're, if you find your place at Philippians chapter number one, and if you're able to, please stand for the reading of God's word. Philippians chapter number 1, we'll be looking at verses 3 through 11. Start in verse number 3. I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now, being confident of this very thing, that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have loved you in my, my heart, inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel, ye all are partakers of my grace. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you, all in the bowels of Jesus Christ. And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ, being filled with the fruits of righteousness, <coughs> excuse me, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of God. Let's pray and ask the Lord's blessing on the message. Dearly Father, we thank you so much for giving us this day. We thank you for the reminder about how we can have joy. And Father, we thank you so much for the ability to be uh, together today. And we ask you to be with those who are unwell and not here. We ask you to help them to recuperate. Father, we ask you to help all of our hearts to be attuned to your Spirit. And Father, may you help us hear from you today. Not from me, not from the sermon I've prepared, but rather, may you be the one speaking to us. And may you help us to be in tuned to your Spirit and help us to be transformed by the renewing of our mind. And we ask this all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. You may be seated. <coughs> Excuse me. I want to take you back. Uh, all the way back to the year 2020. I know, that wasn't too long ago, was it? Uh, two, 2020 was a very interesting year. I declared to everybody, because I am uh, somewhat corny in my humor, I say, all right, I'm looking forward to this year especially. Why is that? Because it's 2020. We have hindsight now. This is great. And so not everybody laughed. In fact, no, nobody did, just like right now. So... <laughs> But in all reality, if you remember, as, as what we all do, 2020 was a very challenging year, to say the least. 2020, went right when uh, I became pastor of the church, and on March 1st, I became the pastor. Two weeks later, I closed the church down because of COVID, and we had a national emergency, in fact, a worldwide pandemic all throughout the world, that everybody was closing down, everybody was isolating because of this terrible uh, disease called COVID. And true enough, many people died because of COVID, and uh, in all reality, that was a really, really challenging time. To think through the, the feelings that we have felt during that point in time, there, there was an a epidemic at that point of depression, epidemic of despair, epidemic of being just isolated, not touching another person's life. And so, uh, so there was a crisis for mental health at that point in time. Now, since COVID, we have regained uh, the, some of the things that we once held dear. Some things never came back, which is you know, unfortunate. I was thinking the, 
just yesterday that we were heading towards uh, Golden Corral, and uh, I think it was during that time of the uh, pandemic that the Golden Corral near in Claremont closed and never opened. Now it's a uh, Miller's Ale House. Um, and so I was thinking about all the things that we, we lost during COVID. Like, for instance, how many of you actually enjoyed going to, um, oh, what's it called? I forgot its name. Uh, Sweet tomatoes, that's it. You're on the right you know, wavelength there. This is great. Yeah, if you, if you really enjoyed all-you-can-eat salad, sweet tomatoes was your thing. But then COVID happened and it never came back. But for all of intensive, intensive purposes, the, still the sum of the feelings during COVID still remain. There are still people today that feel that of despair. There are some people still that feel disencouraged by th things going on in their life. People are facing greater bouts of depression than any other point in time in world history. There are more money being spent on uh, uh, therapists today than there has been since the beginning of our country. And think about it. What we have in Christ, and I'm not saying anything against any therapist, they're there for a reason. They're, they're there for, to help us and our mental state. For us, how do we combat against the delibit, the, the uh, delibitating, that's not the word, the, the horrible thing of despair? That's the question that we're going to answer this month going through the uh, book of Philippians. Philippians is an amazing book. It's all about joy. And all throughout, you can, you can label all the different parts where it says rejoice or, or have joy or, or di different things of that manner. It's only four chapters. You can read it today if you really want to, not during the sermon. But uh, today, after the church service, you can read it and to study it more and more. It's such a fantastic book. It's one of the highlights for a lot of people. Some people's favorite books. And if you ask the person, hey, do you have a verse that uh, is your life verse? Usually you go to Philippians. For some reason, Philippians is a fantastic book that encourages us when we're so downhearted. Now you might say, well, it is the, the Apostle Paul. He had it easy when he wrote the book of Philippians. The answer is, uh, not in your dreams. Uh, it was so Difficult because this is one of those that is called the prison epistles. At this moment in time, as he's penning these words, he is stuck in a prison cell. Now you think about it and you say, well, prison's not that bad. Well, we think about it today. We're not thinking about first century Roman prison where he has nothing except for what is given to him by the churches that support him. Like for instance, if you go to jail today, you get food, you get clothing, you get to match everybody, I, I suppose. Um, uh, you get a place to stay, uh, you get adequate uh, supply of different things. Paul does not. Paul is stuck in prison and everybody has to supply him his needs, whether it be food, whether it be clothing. Now, he does have a place to stay, but that's the, that's the only thing that they have. And it's terrible conditions there in the prison cell. But yet, Paul writes the book of Philippians. And one of the, the verses that we go to as the key verse of the book of Philippians is, Rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say, rejoice. He's writing that as he's in prison. So we can learn a lot from Paul. And, and what the question that we need to ask is, how does Paul do it? How does Paul stay positive during this point in time where everything is taken away from him? The only thing he is given is that which the church supplies. And, and really only, he says in this book, that only the Philippians have met him in his need as no other church has. And so how does he keep this joyful spirit about him? That's what we're going to talk about throughout the next five weeks. And today we're going to be looking at how to have joy, find joy through prayer. I don't know about you and your circumstance right now, but you might find yourself to be in a place where you are despairing. A place that you are discouraged either by your walk with the Lord or you're discouraged by things that are happening to you. Somebody out there might be uh, feeling that feeling of depression. 
So how can we combat all those feelings? Well, we're going to find joy through five specific things. Today, we're going to look at finding joy through prayer. Notice with me what he says here in Philippians chapter 1, verse number 3. He says, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy. He says, every time I think about praying, for, every time I get on my knees and I give you before God, you give me this sense of joy. Think about the joy that we have in that of prayer. Now we're going to look at specifically three parts to prayer, three uh, elements in prayer that we have to understand and think through more and more. And as we do that, the sense of joy will be there. First of all, number one, we're going to see the purpose of prayer the purpose of prayer specifically is to get closer to God. Here, Paul the Apostle, he is praying for the people at the churches specifically. And in fact, if you go through all the Pauline epistles, you see almost every single one he's saying, I am praying for you specifically for these things. Just about every single time. You think about a person that might be in despair, Paul fits that category, but yet he doesn't because he can get closer to God there in that prison. You think about many times in history where people are being um, well tortured for their faith. They could still be close to God even in the midst of that. I think of one person specifically that he, it was during World War II. He was captured and he was thrown into a jail cell there alone for large periods of the day. But yet he, he said that what got him through it was specifically reminding himself what the Bible says and two, that he can pray all throughout the day. And they tortured him relentlessly. Terrible things which I'm not going to even say about, but yet he said that he can get closer and closer to God. You think about different Bible examples of this. What comes to my mind is that of Elijah. Elijah was an amazing individual, right? One of my favorite prophets, one of my favorite areas of the narrative that is just amazing. He is one of a man of prayer. He is one that is one that prays and things happen. He goes to Ahab and says, within the time that I pray, it's not going to rain. It's not going to have any dew. Nothing is going to survive until I give the word. What boldness he has when saying that. And three and a half years later, it wasn't until he gets on, uh, on his knees, uh, having his head between his knees, and he's praying, 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 and then all of a sudden, he, his servant comes back to him and says, I see a cloud. It's a little cloud the size of my hand. And he says, go tell Ahab, you better get down from the mountain because it's about to pour. And so he's praying and things happen. But yet after that great uh, time where it's the Mount Carmel experience, Elijah has about of depression. He gets wind that Jezebel wants to kill him. Well, that's, that's pretty bad. The ruling authority wants to kill you. That's pretty bad. Never had that for me. So, But yeah, he's in depression. After seeing what God did, he goes to God and his prayer is, you might as well end my life now because I'm no better than any of my fathers. Just take me out. He's having that sense of depression that he's asking for God to kill him. But yet, what did he do? God commanded him to go, and specifically he went to Mount Horeb where, where the Ten Commandments was given, where, where Moses met God at, at the burning bush. And there, God met him there specifically. And he says, why are you here, Elijah? And God has communion with Elijah during that dark part in his life. And he goes on to do ministry. We think about the different people that get closer and closer to God. It's usually the time where it is the most stressful in a person's life that they want to get closer and closer to God. I think in my own life, different examples about times where I felt that I, it, it was not going to work unless I got closer to God. I remember specifically... I went to PCC, and uh, I'd never been there before in my life until I went there as a student. 
So I had no idea what to really, uh, really think about when I got there. And boy, it is a huge place. It's a city within a city, really, is what it is. And I'm just looking at everything, and we got through you know, registering for classes so quickly, and I'm just thinking, oh, did I bought, bit, bite off more than I can chew? I thought, oh, this is, this is rather, rather difficult. And then right off the bat, I, I go right into work. Uh, I work in the kitchen. And I'll tell you one thing. I knew nothing, nothing about the kitchen. In fact, when I saw that I was going to be a cook, I said to my mom specifically, well, I hope they like you know, peanut butter and jelly sandwiches because that's all I can make, it, make in the kitchen. And so I went there. I knew nothing. They said, hey, throw these you know, green beans in a steamer. I'm like, what's a steamer? And okay, so this is how a steamer works. You, you throw it in there, you crank it up, and then you'll have green beans cooked. Okay. I didn't understand a word he said, but I just did what he showed me to do and, and all of that. Then it was break time, and I just got back to where we were supposed to eat, sat down, and there I'm crying. <laughs> I'm like, Lord, I don't know how this is going to work out because I am just beside myself. I don't know how these classes are going to work. I'm from public school. I've never been into a Christian uh, school in my life, and behold, it was actually a lot harder than my public school experience. <laughs> True. Uh, but think about it. I am praying, <laughs> and I'm just beside myself. I said, Lord, I can't do this. But you called me into the ministry, so you're going to have to do it. And so, as I say this, the peace of God came upon me. I'm like, okay, I think I, I can do the next step, and the next step, and the next step. And lo and behold, four years later, I got through college. And then three years after that, I got my master's and graduated from seminary. So God helped me through that. Think about this. If the purpose of prayer is to get closer and closer to God, and we do that when life is difficult for us, when life is not so difficult, what usually happens? Well, sometimes we let our prayer life slip. We barely pray. But then an emergency happens and, oh, we're back to our knees. And, oh, God, I need you to help me in this way. And, and I just... We're closer to God once again. Now, if you're closer to God, every time there's just an emergency, there's a problem. We need to get closer to God Every single day. Because when the emergency then arises, then we're still right there with God. It's like, okay, well, I'm walking with the Lord. I'm having communion with Him. I'm having fellowship with Him. And, uh, well, God, you're going to help me through this. As you helped me through the last day, and the last day, and the last day. So, the question for all of us to ask, do we want to get closer to God? You say, well, I, I think I am closer to God. Well, do you... Do you have the desire to be more and more with Him? Do you have the desire to read your Bible more, to understand Him through God's Word? Do we have that utmost desire to be in His presence throughout the day and to worship before His throne? Do we have that desire? Or is it, oh, yeah, God's something we do on Sunday, but the rest of the week is ours. To get closer and closer to God. First of all, that's the purpose of prayer is to get closer to God. Somebody said, oh, it's the purpose of prayer is asking for things. God is not a spiritual Santa Claus. God wants a relationship with us. And for those of us that are in Jesus Christ, we have that relationship bought by His precious blood. And because of what He did on the cross for us, He forgives us of our sins. But yet, that's not the, the whole, whole enchilada of what we have in Christ. What we have in Christ now is a new relationship with God. A restored relationship we have with the Creator of the universe. The Creator that created us in due time. If it wasn't for him, we wouldn't be here. And he wants a relationship with us. Oh, we can go closer and closer to God through the act of prayer. Not only that, but number two, specifically, we need, we're going to see the potential of prayer, the potential of our prayers 
specifically to help many people. Notice with me what Paul says here. I love what his prayer requests are, the specifics of his prayer requests. Notice with me in verse number 9. And it says, And this I pray, that your love may abound yet more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, that ye may approve things that are excellent, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ unto the glory and praise of of God. Specifically, he's praying for the believers of Philippi that they increase in their love one for another. That's one thing that we ought to be praying for for one another is that we increase in love. The very fact that Jesus came at all shows God's love for us. We ought to show our love towards other people. How do we do that? Through prayer. If we pray, we can show and dedicate our own love towards each other. As we love God, we love other people. Paul says that I want your love to grow more and more in knowledge and in all judgment, knowing exactly how to love a specific person at a specific time, to love, to love. What Jesus says to his disciples is, the world will know that you're my disciples if you have love one toward another. His example was that of washing his disciples' feet. How much do we need to increase in our love? We need to grow more and more, and that's a, a fruit of the Spirit. But yet, not only that, is to that you may approve things that are excellent. You need a discernment of things uh, in our life. You know, there's many different possibilities of us picking and choosing uh, the things going on in our life, but yet, seldom do we think, okay, what is the best that we can have, that we can look at and what we can have in our life. Well, he's praying for discernment upon the things in life that actually matter. It matters how we spend our time. It matters how we talk to other people. It matters how we show uh, affirmation to each other. It, It matters how we as a church body grow together in the love of Christ and that we might approve things that are excellent the best things that we could have, that ye may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. For us, we need to be blameless in our how we walk with before the Lord. The word sincere there has this idea of being genuine. Uh, back in the old days, in the Roman times, they would have pottery, and the, that's what you would have. You wouldn't have the uh, uh, Mr. Uh, uh, Mr. Lid or whatever it is, the Tupperware, you know, for those who had Tupperware parties, you didn't have that. So back in these days, you have the clay jars to hold different things. And so what would happen at times that they would make a clay jar, and uh, this is my impression of somebody making a clay jar, I don't really know. So uh, it's going like this, and then uh, eventually it hardens. Well, all of a sudden you realize that what jar you just made has a big, nasty crack in it. It developed. Okay, well, that would mean that you would have to start over or break that jar or to start over with a new piece. Well, some people that weren't very credible would take wax and they would put it on that crack and, and then mix it up with that clay. That wax would harden. And guess what you have? Well, you have a jar that looks perfect after it's painted and all that. You wouldn't know that there's a defect in it. This word means to be tested by sunlight. What happens is you pick up the jar. What you would do, the sun's right there. You would lift it up and the sun would reveal where there is wax or if it all is genuine. All is sincere. For us, we need to be sincere before God to tell Him of exactly what we feel, exactly what we think, exactly what, what's, what's bothering us. And guess what? He wants to hear it. You know, people pay lots of money for a therapist that listens to your problems, but what we have also, not just that, but we have someone that is with us 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, 365 days a year. Think of that. You have God 
all the time. And as much as we can confide in Him, as much as we can cast all of our care upon Him, He actually cares about us. It's not like we're paying Him for His time, but rather He gave His all for us. Oh, the joy, the the potential for us to help many people, including ourselves. Here, the Apostle Paul gives specific prayer requests, and these prayer requests, we can actually pray one for another. It's just amazing to think about that we have portion and possibility that we can have a spiritual impact on one another here at our church. That we can grow in Christ. That we can grow in His grace. That we might become more like Jesus Christ. That's what the world needs. The world does not need more religion of I'm going to do, 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 and then everything will be fine at the end. But rather, the world needs us to show it a relationship with God that we need to have in order for them to know that they are missing out on the relationship between Almighty God and themselves. For us, we can pray, and there's a potential. Think about the potential of us praying for people to receive Christ as their own personal Savior. You know, when my family has a time of, of uh, uh, devotions at the end of the night, we have time where we pray one another. We pray all around. And I can't just express enough how wonderful it is to hear my own kids saying, I'm praying for this person to that, for them to receive Christ as their own personal Savior. I, this person, and this person, and this person. Oh, it just touches my heart. Like, yeah! Pray for those people. Pray for them to receive Christ. Pray for them to have soft hearts when they hear the Gospel and to receive Christ as their only personal Savior. To pray and possibilities will happen. Possibilities are there. The potential of our prayers are astronomical from what we ever think about in our prayer life. Think about this. If you pray for one person to get saved, that one person gets saved, and then they lead somebody else to Christ. And they lead somebody else to Christ. They lead somebody else to Christ. And that is all on your account. Not that we're working our way to heaven, but rather as the reward that God gives us. Just an amazing thing to think about. It's like the uh, there's a person, a a, uh, Sunday school teacher, you know, preaching and teaching the Word of God, and that that teacher looks at this one individual and says, "You know what? I need to tell him about Christ." And he tells this one individual about Jesus Christ. He gets saved. And guess what happens? Eventually in his life, he gets called to the ministry. And not just any ministry. This is at a time where television just became a thing. And he has touched more lives with the gospel of Christ than anybody else in the history of the world, numerically speaking, in one lifetime. That was Billy Graham. How one person can affect one person who could affect multitudes. The prayers that we pray for one another, the prayers that we pray for the lost to receive Christ as their own personal Savior, there's so much potential in that. We just need to remind ourselves about that as we pray that God answers prayer. Last but not least, the third part, number three, The particulars of prayer. Number three, particulars. We need to pray the promises of God. Notice with me what the Apostle Paul says here. He says amazing uh, things. Verse number three, I thank my God upon every remembrance of you, always in every prayer of mine for you, all making requests with joy for your fellowship in the gospel from the first day until now. Notice this, being confident of this very thing that he which hath begun a good work in you will perform it until the day of Jesus Christ, even as it is meet for me to think this of you all, because I have have you in my heart inasmuch as both in my bonds and in the defense and confirmation of the gospel ye all are partakers. For God is my record, how greatly I long after you in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Think about it this way. What we can pray, if you, th- if you think yourself, well, I don't know what to pray, here's what you should do. Read your Bible. Okay, that's step one. 
Actually, pray before you read your Bible. That, that's even better. Pray before you read your Bible. You read your Bible, and guess what happens? As you're reading, you're praying specific principles that you see in Scripture. You see specific commands. You're praying the commands that are in Scripture. You're, you see that in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Praying, Lord, help me to be more thankful. Uh, you pray in the Word of God and it says, I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Lord, I need Your strength. May You help me to be strong for You. You see throughout the, even in this passage, that I, for God is my record, how greatly I long after You in the bowels of Jesus Christ. Jesus loves these people. God, You help me to love people better. Help me to love people like Jesus loved me. Help me to love people even though while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Help me to love like that. And the more and more we pray the prayers of praying what the Word of God says, guess what? That's exactly what God wants us to pray for. We're praying for God's will. Oh God, Show me your will and and then show me exactly where to go and exactly who to talk to. I'm praying for the the you know the will of God. Well, what's the will of God? Well, we find it in scripture. That's that's the first place we need to go to when we're saying, all right, what is the will of God? It's right here. Get into the word, read it, pray it. And as we do that, the more understanding that we have of God and that He loves us, that He wants to have a relationship with us, that we can have the ability to pray and God answers our prayers. One, one major amazing thing to, to do, I have had this over and over again, this is just a wonderful reminder, is guess what? God answers our prayers. I just love the fact, this happens... Uh, <laughs> on a regular, regular basis at times, at least once or twice a month. I, I, I'm up here, and we ask for prayer requests in the Sunday school hour. I write them down. We pray, and I pray through them during the week. And guess what? Uh, by Wednesday, they say, oh, there's an answer to that prayer request that you prayed for this last week. When you prayed on Sunday, this is the answer. When you prayed for it this on Sunday, this happened. When you prayed for this last Wednesday, this happened. And there was prayers being answered last Sunday and, and who all came for the Easter service. So we praise the Lord for each and every one that came. And so we pray and we pray and God answers prayers. We can have joy through prayers because we can get closer to God. Because we can help people by our prayers. And we can pray very specifically by reading our Bibles and praying through that. I hope this has been an encouragement for you. I'm going to ask, um, I'm going to ask for, I think, uh, Wanda to come to the organ. We're just going to have a time where we can dedicate ourselves to the Lord. Now, there's, somebody might be here that you have never trusted the Lord Jesus as your own personal Savior. You can receive Him today as your own personal Savior. But for those who have, I want us to have a time of prayer Silent prayer between us and God that we are going to pray, but yet not just doing our, our, our duty, but rather that we have a desire that we get closer to God and more intimate relationship with God Almighty through Jesus Christ. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we thank you so much for all that you have given us today. May you bless this time that we have as we silently bring before you our de- desires that we have. May you help us. If there's somebody here that hasn't return- received Jesus as their Savior, may they pray and do so uh, during this time. And Father, we thank you so much for all that you have done. I pray this in Jesus' name.